Hello friends, welcome back to Arun Anesthesia Academy. This tutorial is about cervical plexus block. So we have superficial, intermediate and deep cervical plexus block. We can give blind and ultrasound guided. So I'll be focusing on superficial and intermediate cervical plexus block and that too ultrasound based. So let's go through this. Coming to the sono anatomy of cervical plexus, it is formed from the first four cervical nerves. So that is from C1 to C4. C1 is not much of interest for local regional anesthesia because it is only motor nerve, it supplies the suboccipital muscles. The C2 to C4, it forms the plexus and afterwards it pierces the cervical fascia through the layers of cervical fascia, it comes out and it can be seen between the levator scapulae and the middle scalene muscle in the deeper part and the sternocleidomastoid in the superficial part. And finally, it comes out through the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid at the midpoint of the sternocleidomastoid. That is where it corresponds for the thyroid cartilage notch. There are five components of cervical plexus. It gives cutaneous branches which supply the anterolateral neck and including the shoulder part. Then it gives off ansa cervicalis, supply to the ansa cervicalis. It gives off branch phrenic nerve, it supplies the diaphragm. Then it gives off branches to the spinal accessory nerve thereby supplies the sternocleidomastoid and it supplies the muscles of the neck. The cutaneous branches are the one which are important for local regional anesthesia. It gives off the lesser occipital nerve, there is greater auricular nerve, there is transverse cervical nerve and there is supraclavicular nerve. Supraclavicular nerve, there are again three which supplies median, intermediate and lateral. These three supraclavicular nerves covers from the anteriorly, from the second rib level to posteriorly to the spine of scapula till the tip of shoulder. So after formation of cervical plexus, it comes out by piercing different layers of cervical fascia. So it is very important to know the, which are the layers of cervical fascia, how we can classify it. So cervical fascia, it has got mainly two important layers. One is a superficial layer and there is a deep layer. Superficial layer is nothing but the subcutaneous tissue and deep layer, it is further divided into superficial, middle and deep part. The superficial part of the deep layer is called as investing fascia. This investing fascia is nothing but which covers the sternocleidomastoid muscle and you have a middle part middle part is something called as visceral fascia it supplies the visceral part including you have trachea we have thyroid gland everything is covered by the middle layer of deep fascia and there is deep part of deep fascia it is called as prevertebral fascia or more appropriately called as perivertebral fascia because only in the anterior part we call it as prevertebral fascia or as all it is called as perivertebral fascia. So there is superficial layer, deep layer has got a superficial or investing layer, middle layer or the visceral layer and you have prevertebral or perivertebral layer. Any injection of local anesthetic superficial to the investing layer is called as superficial cervical plexus block. Any local anesthetic injected between the investing layer and the prevertebral layer or the perivertebral layer is called as intermediate cervical plexus block and any local anesthetic injected deep to the prevertebral or perivertebral layer is called as the deep cervical plexus block. So in this tutorial we will be seeing about the superficial and intermediate cervical plexus block that means we are injecting all local anesthetic superficial to the prevertebral layer. Differentiating between the superficial and intermediate cervical plexus block is very important. There are so many videos and so many articles if you see. There is lot of confusion between what is superficial, what is intermediate. So most of the confusion happens because people give blind block. So in blind block, you cannot clearly differentiate whether you are injecting superficially or whether you are injecting intermediate. The clinical effect which is seen, it can be prejudiced. You cannot say the correct response what you are getting. So that is the reason why which there is lot of confusion in videos and articles. So after this video, you should be very clear with what is cervical fascia and where you are going to inject the local anesthetic. Coming to the technique of cervical plexus block. So the block can be done either patient in supine position or in semi sitting position or in lateral decubitus position. The advantage of supine or semi sitting position is that you can give either side or if you want to give bilateral block, it can be easy to give the block. The advantage of doing a lateral decubitus position is that the ergonomics is going to be far better than the semi sitting or the supine position. But if you have to give bilateral block, you have to change the position of the patient in between. That is the only problem. So the technique of giving the block is that we use a high frequency linear transducer because it is a very superficial block. We start from the midline. 
at the level of your thyroid notch and you come laterally that is at the c4 level we will do and we come laterally so laterally when we come we can obviously see the internal jugular vein the carotid artery and when more laterally we come we will see the superficial sternocleidomastoid muscle the area of interest is lateral end of the sternocleidomastoid muscle in the lateral end of sternocleidomastoid muscle should be visualized you have to visualize the levator scapulae and the middle scalene muscle so between these two is our area of interest just posterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle there is the investing layer of deep cervical fascia and just superficial to the middle scalene and levator scapulae that is the prevertebral or the perivertebral layer of deep cervical fascia between these two we have to inject local anesthetic we can use an in plane technique or an out of plane technique in either ways we will be piercing the skin subcutaneous tissue platysma and the sternocleidomastoid muscle and we will be reaching the area of interest that is between the sternocleidomastoid and the levator scapulae muscle that is between the investing layer of deep cervical fascia and the perivertebral layer of deep cervical fascia this will give you the intermediate cervical plexus block any injection if you give superficial to the investing layer or any injection you give just in the subcutaneous plane that is called as superficial cervical plexus block and any injection if you give deep to the perivertebral layer that is called as deep cervical plexus block people commonly go ahead with superficial and intermediate cervical plexus block the advantage of doing an intermediate cervical plexus block is that you have more effectiveness compared to superficial cervical plexus block and at the same time complications associated with the deep cervical plexus blocks are avoided we normally use 10 ml of 0.25% bupivacaine along with an adjuvant like dexamethasone 4 mg so that you will get an extended block and normally we give it as an analgesic technique along with general anesthesia we can do procedures under sole regional anesthesia as well so in that case you may have to add a 2% lignocaine with adrenaline solution so that you can have an immediate onset of the block with a prolonged duration so once we give the local anesthetic the onset time is around 10 to 15 minutes so we can check with the sensory distribution in the anterolateral part of the head and neck so there we can check cold sensation and we can appreciate the loss of cold sensation only problem is when we come to the midline there can be crossover supply from the opposite side so either we have to give a bilateral intermediate cervical plexus or superficial cervical plexus block for midline procedures or else structures which are more close to midline for the procedures like that we can infiltrate in the midline starting from thyroid notch till the suprasternal notch so that is a more crude method rather than that you can give a bilateral intermediate cervical plexus or superficial cervical plexus block as you now know the area of supply of cervical plexus it supplies the anterolateral neck including the shoulder so indications is as simple as any procedures in the midline you have to give bilateral intermediate cervical plexus or superficial cervical plexus block procedures like thyroidectomy for procedures like anterior cervical discectomy and fusion for the little lateral procedures which we do in the emergency department like invasive line access internal jugular vein access for the purpose of hemodialysis catheter insertions for the drainage of abscess in the submandibular region for drainage of abscess involving the ear lobe for lymph node dissection for lymph node excision for surgeries including the tympanomastoid area for suboccipital or any occipital craniotomies so any surgeries involving this area we can give cervical plexus block preferably intermediate cervical plexus block if we are going for a midline procedure we have to give bilateral intermediate or superficial cervical plexus block we see the contraindications of cervical plexus block it is like any other block one is patient refusal any local infection any previous surgery with scar formation or radiation in the neck it will be very difficult to identify the anatomy even with ultrasound that is why it is a contraindication and other contraindications are mainly for deep cervical plexus block because when you give a deep cervical plexus block there is a more chance of phrenic nerve involvement so if there is a already compromised pulmonary status or if there is a phrenic nerve palsy or injury on the other side giving a deep cervical plexus block is not advised and obviously because of the phrenic nerve involvement we never give a bilateral deep cervical plexus block that's why because of the complications associated with the deep cervical plexus block people are going more and more with intermediate cervical plexus block can have infection we can have hematoma formation 
and there is chance of local anxiety systemic toxicity if we give intravascular or if we cross the dose if we give with large injection pressure all those are common with any other blocks major complications are seen with deep cervical plexus block because you are in more proximity to the neural structures there is more chance of phrenic nerve blockage you can have subarachnoid or you can have an epidural injection so for deep cervical plexus block people are avoiding it nowadays so that's it about cervical plexus block hope you all understood how to give the block what all we have to see how the sonar anatomy it is hope you will use it in future and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share thank you